sec that was so strict that if it if your force was not listed in the force planning construct it would not exist this represents the other end of the spectrum i think to some force planners who look at this and you can fit almost anything and i think some have attempted to do so that's not the intent though from osd the idea is not to fit everything in there the idea here is that the department was pushing for a diversified portfolio to meet the range of changes Again, recognizing that we would not be able to accurately predict the future, what capabilities, what programs, what orientation ought the department take in order to meet uncertainty? So for OSD in particular, the focus is on balancing programs to, to confront both major conflict and irregular warfare. So in programmatic terms, this is meant for us reducing spending, for example, on fighters to increase spending on bombers. The idea being in the future that we would need greater strategic reach and that we had sufficient investment in the fighter program. That does not mean that there was a divestment, but a shift in where additional resources would go. The other area, for example, would be under CC superiority, investing in programs and that, uh, investing in space technology, and increasing SOF overall, but with a specific rebalancing of uh, the SOF ground forces. Gaps obviously remain. I mentioned at least two critiques of the force planning construct. And as we start to prepare for the next QDR, one of the areas that I hope that I'll certainly recommend to the next administration that they take a look at are some of these gaps. And reducing, I think, um, or providing greater concrete or tangibility to our force planning construct so that it can drive better to a better force sizing and investment construct. I think some of the gaps that uh, certainly ASD Solik has recognized uh, are in um, ISR and in soft air. And we're constantly looking at the soft air. We think we got the, a focus on the ground force, but there needs to be a matching focus or a different or better rebalancing uh, in soft air. Additionally, uh, another fair critique and one that the ASD has mentioned. Uh, definitely in an area that we still need to take, do work, I think not just in QDR, but also in the guidance to develop the force, is decisions and divestment. These are particularly difficult, um, highly politically charged. They will affect not just service programs, but congressional interests. So divestment is always a difficult area, um, difficult area to achieve agreement uh, across all branches of government. And so I think in past QDRs, particularly in 2006, I don't know that we de de did the best job of figuring out we were, we, where we would divest. And then another area where we think that we could do additional work, and this is something we're cooperating closely with policy planning on, is, is how we analyze risk, um, better ways to express risk decisions, better ways to help decision makers um, understand where they are assuming risk and, and where it's acceptable. So those are areas where, again, uh, we'll recommend that the new administration take a look. And I mentioned sizing. We, we do want to drive towards a force planning construct that provides better granularity, better um, parameters for sizing. We also have to balance present day conflicts and present day economic realities with what we see in a future world. That's, I think, truly one of the difficult parts. I mentioned up front that past QDRs were challenged by understanding the strategic environment. In looking at these historically, you can definitely see that authors uh, and planners many times confuse their time horizons, that we are, we are where we are. We sit in today's environment with today's resources, and we can't help but be influenced by the events around us. The Court Annual Defense Review, however, is supposed to be you know, a 20-year look. Very, very hard to do when you're also feeding the competing, facing competing pressures. So in that area, broadly speaking, I think there's a need to maintain joint force capabilities to win two simultaneous conflicts. And looking at what the two administrations, possible administrations coming in, I think historically we've always had that construct. Uh, I would be very surprised to see uh, that construct change. What I think, however, if the next, if the incoming administration takes this as a starting point or wants to take some of the programs and approaches of the past QDR uh, as a baseline, we'll look at the, not just the quantity of conflicts, but the quality and what it is in those conflicts um, that will stress the force, 
uh, what it is in those conflicts that will dictate investment and, again, divestment, where we'll take risk. And I think for Reserve and National Guard, uh, a major portion of that will be the op-tempo op and um, how the forces are integrated. That is very much, I think, a present-day problem, uh, but one that will be continuing and that we'll have to grapple with well into the future. So I think I'll close here, because I think that was my 10 minutes, and, and turn it over. But thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions.